in this section we discuss about the derivative and the shape of the graph okay. uh, the function f is strictly increasing on an interval i if fx1 is less than fx2 whenever x1 x2 belong to the interval i and x1 less than x2 okay what it means is if this is our function and this is the interval i if we pick any two inputs x1 and x2 and if x1 is less than x2 then fx1 is less than fx2 that means this function preserve the order of the input and output will have the same order okay so for whatever the two points you pick this function preserves the order whatever the input you two inputs if you pick it will preserve the order okay other thing if you uh, go towards the positive direction of the x-axis as x increases y values of the function values also increase okay then we say function is decreasing if I take x1 and x2 in on an interval i, if you pick any x1 and x2 inputs, again if it, let's say x1 is less than x2, but if it's decreasing, fx2 is less than fx1. Okay, that means it's reverse the order. Okay, it's reverse the order. And in a, so whatever the two points you pick in the domain, the function will reverse the order. Okay, so see here fx2 is less than fx1. No but x1 is less than x2 okay so in a decreasing fraction we you go if you go towards in positive direction of x that means in the increasing direction as x increases y values decrease okay opposite behavior by looking at the derivative we can identify the points where the function is increasing and points where the function is decreasing okay the monotone function theorem help us there okay let f be differentiable on a open interval a b if derivative is positive for every point if derivative is positive for every point x in a b then f is strictly increasing and if derivative is negative for every point in a b then f is strictly decreasing okay so if f dash is positive on an interval the derivative f dash is positive on interval then function increase in that interval and if the derivative f dash is negative on an interval then function is decreasing on that interval function decrease okay so if you have just one point and want to decide you can simply plug in the x value and look at the sign of sign at that point okay if you recall that slope if the slope of a positive slope of a straight line is positive then straight line is increasing the straight slope of a straight line is negative then all straight line is decreasing okay so derivative is the generalization of the concept of slope to include nonlinear functions which behave the same way as slope no? if you want to identify the intervals where a function is increasing and intervals where a function is decreasing there is little bit more work than just plugging in for the derivative I list the step here and explain them through an example Determine where the function defined by fx equals x cubed plus 12x squared plus 45x is strictly increasing and where it is strictly decreasing. Okay, So here we have to find the intervals where this guy increase and decrease. Okay, So we will start by first finding the derivative. 
okay so we have to this is the given function we have to find the derivative of it okay by using some rule we can break it down to differentiating individual terms so when I differentiate x to the 3 I bring down the 3 subtract 1 from 3 no 2 so I get 3x squared here I'm using power rule then when I'm differentiating 12x squared 12 I can pull it out of the differentiation sign and just differentiate this x squared using power rule here again I bring down the 2 and multiply 12 I get 24 so I get 24x because I bring in down the 2 and 2 minus 1 is 1 we don't have to write it so I get 24x here again here I can pull out the 45 outside of the derivative and just differentiate in this x okay so different derivative of x is 1 so I get a 45 there so second step is to set the derivative to 0 and solve the resulting equation for x no so we will set this is my derivative 3x squared plus 24x plus 45 equal to 0 now I have to solve this for x okay so first thing I can notice that I can divide all the terms by 3 and simplify the equation little bit so I divide everything by 3 I result in x squared plus 86 8x plus 15 no okay, so this is a quadratic equation I can easily solve it by factoring in this case so I factor 15 3 and plus 5 no now I, I get set x1 to 0 and I get x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 5 okay so I solved it next one is to mark these points on the number line okay so I mark them on number line I get negative 5 negative 3 okay uh, the two solutions you will see why we are doing this next okay now I need to pick a test value from each sub interval so these sub intervals are the ones here I get one interval before negative 5 one interval between negative 5 and negative 3 and one after negative 3 these are my solutions no that ones I mark on number line so my first interval is negative infinity to 5 and second one negative 5 to negative 3 negative 3 to infinity now I can pick test value test value is a representation for that interval I can pick any value inside that interval to represent it okay so for this one I will pick negative 6 I could have picked negative 7 also okay here I pick negative 4 from this interval I could have picked negative 3.5 if I wanted okay but okay here file I pick negative 4 and I pick 0 for the last interval okay so that is the interval from negative 3 to negative 3 to positive infinity okay so these are my test values okay here for this guy I pick 0 no so now I plugging in each value for my derivative function okay and look at the sign so I plug negative 6 for derivative function negative 4 for derivative function and 0 for derivative function and check the sign okay so if I plug negative 6 for the derivative I get positive if I pick plug negative 4 for the derivative I get negative and if I plug 0 I get positive okay this 3x squared plus 24x plus 45 is the derivative now this is where you should plug these numbers and look at the answer if it's positive you put positive if it's negative put negative likewise okay so now this is a polynomial function which is continuous okay now if it want to change its sign from a positive to negative it has to go continuously gradually decrease and then go to the negative region no so he have to cross a point where he becomes zero okay but this function can come become zero only at this negative 5 and negative 3 which are endpoints of the intervals okay so because of that inside the interval it cannot change the sign okay so it will have to remain whatever the sign this test value gives okay so this gives positive sign so whole of the interval represented by that sign will stay positive then whole of this will stay negative likewise each interval take the 
all of the interval will take the sign given by its representative test value okay so in negative first interval negative 5 to negative infinity derivative is ne positive no because derivative is positive function in increases on in this interval okay negative infinity to negative 5 function is increasing then for this guy it's negative 4 okay so derivative remain throughout neg negative sorry the answer you when you plug negative 4 to this guy is negative okay so the derivative will remain negative in all of this interval therefore function is decreasing in this interval negative 5 to negative 3 okay then when you plug in 0 to the derivative you get a positive answer so function will remain positive in throughout this interval okay so it is increasing negative 3 to infinity no so negative infinity to negative 5 function is increasing negative 5 to negative 3 function is decreasing negative 3 to infinity function is again increasing okay so we solve the problem because it's originally asked us to find the intervals where it increases and decreases